Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video where I disappoint my past self. I'm not really sure what the reading ramble is anymore, but today I wanted to talk about three things. First is the books I've read and what I got from them. Then I want to talk about habits a little bit. There's one thing that's made it very clear to me that my reading habit is messed up to what feels like beyond repair. And then the third thing is what I'm setting out to do, what I've tried to get that reading habit back on track. Every month, these rambles will be coming out. If I've read nothing, it'll be a disappointing video. So anyway, this will be mostly riff, but if you do get something from it, let me know in the comments down below. My name is Mark, if I haven't mentioned already, and without further ado, let's get into the two books that I read in the last three months. Yeah, I finished two books. <laughs> one in December, and I'm not even done with this one. I've actually read a few times in the past couple of days, which is a great start. When I read, I'll take, you know, jot down some ideas and notes on some notepad, just so I can talk about them in this video. The first book is Pleasures and Sorrows of Work. I picked this up because I thought it would be great since I'm starting a job soon and now I'm actually in that job. Not at all what I expected, all in all. It's Alan de Botain. I've read two of his other books. It just wasn't what I was expecting. He effectively tracks various things from their, their genesis, to their end. From the moment a fish gets caught to when a child is eating it to dinner. And it's super enlightening in many ways to kind of see these things and how people appreciate various different things depending on what they do. You know, when I open up a game, I have a certain appreciation for some of the design elements, perhaps, maybe not as much as an actual designer. My friend who's studying film, he might watch a movie and think, wow, that shot was really cool. And I'm just sitting there like, I like that. I don't know why though. <laughs> you out there, you know, something, there's something that you notice in the world because of what you do and what you've learned, I guess, that most people don't notice. One of the things that really stuck with me among all the things I highlighted throughout the book is this one quote at the end, toward the end that says, work does not by its nature permit us to do anything other than take it too seriously end quote when i'm looking at my projects how hobbies or whatever like making videos i tend to view them as work maybe i'm taking this too seriously a lot of people have a lot of appreciation for things but it has been about two months since i finished it but it is nice to have that long-term takeaway then uh there's musashi's dakota musashi was a swordsman from samurai times. And he's got these 21 precepts. They're kind of used amongst Sun Tzu's art of war. The book starts by talking about how he was probably a sociopath, which, you know, half crazy, half genius, finding modern meaning, whatever. The reason I got this was because I just wanted something to provoke more thought into his precepts. And it does just that, but it's not the best book. All in all, it has these five different perspectives, monk, teacher, businessman, warrior, insurance executive, who talk about each of the precepts. It does provoke thought of my own because, you know, I'll come across the monk's concepts on be detached from desire your whole life. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, that kind of goes along with what I think. But then the insurance executive comes along and says this thing. I'm like, that doesn't, I don't agree with that. I don't like that at all. It's less about the value that these random people provide on the precepts and more about the fact that they prompt you to have your own thoughts in many ways. They, these various people prompt you to think about the precepts deeper as opposed to just one line and thinking about the precept open-endedly. I'm not even halfway through. I've had been reading this for about a month and a bit. I just didn't read for like three weeks straight. That's the end of it. I'll talk about that more later anyway. Yeah, I read two books in the last three months and it doesn't feel great. I'm sure there are other books that I've read. I've read some manga, I've read some comics, but the big thing to me that shouts, your reading habit is broken. In two cases, reading has been a stepping stone to a larger goal, and that larger goal cannot be obtained if I don't read these books. Let's talk about those. So if you haven't been following me, I am learning Japanese. I have these Japanese learning logs that you can follow. And one of the things I got at the beginning was these Japanese short stories. At the start, I would I said I'd read one a week. Long story short, that's not possible. But now it is genuinely possible for me to read and understand 80% of each of these short stories. Maybe 80% is a little confident. But the problem is I haven't been reading them because I haven't been reading. And so the problem with Japanese is that because I'm not reading, I'm sacrificing a large chunk of learning Japanese. If you're on this channel, then you likely know I've made a bunch of typing videos. The second instance in which this same realization has come to me is with Nerd Per Minute by Sean Rona. He sent this book to me uh, graciously and I read one chapter, but the problem is I, I promised I'd make a video on it and I still have it on my Todoist. I've got notes on what I've read so far, but because I haven't been reading, I can't make this video on the book. Reading that I've wanted to do for its own sake, then I layered something onto that. It's not reading for its own sake, it's reading so I can make this video, reading so I can learn a new language that I really want to get proficient in. But because I don't read, those both of those things are being hindered. It sucks hitting postpone on this video idea week after week because I haven't read a book. I've been thinking a lot about uh, intention lately. Intention on, okay, you know, if I go to get food, what am I getting? Don't buy granola bars, because you see them go in thinking I'll buy this, this, and this because of 
what I'll make this week. Wake up in the morning because of something, not for its own sake. And so if I give every single book I read a certain intention to read it with, then perhaps I can make it through. It's these external things that I want to work on and become good at that are being hindered by reading. Perhaps I can take the idea of intention and apply that to all of my reading. That's one of the things I am gonna be trying, but there are a few more as well. So with the things I, I want to be working on while I read, uh, at the end of the day, I will say this comes down to self-discipline. This comes down to saying, no, Mark, don't watch TV, read a book. I just finished or got to the end of where they're currently at, a few TV shows. And the thing is, there's always gonna be another TV show. Even if there's no next episode, there will always be another TV show. I realized this in freshman year. So one of the things that I wanna be conscious of is if I'm watching something, it has to be A, with intention, and B, can I be reading right now? Discipline is what I'm trying to say. And so one thing, I've said this in the past, but reading on the subway, for the last two days, this has sort of worked. Keep my earbuds in while I walk to the station, I'll take them out. Because it's something to do, I will start reading while I'm on the train. I did this going to three different destinations, did not do it on the return trips. But I think that's a good start. Reading before bed and reading when you wake up. Habits, difficult, blah, 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 blah. Uh, one important thing is to link habits together. Do things after lunch, after you wake up. So when I wake up, alongside this habit of waking up early, which I am trying so hard to do, it's kind of nice being a work in progress again. It's a recognizable feeling and in a way it's good. Anyway, the last couple of nights I've made sure that my phone is away. Like no listen to music or ASMR as I fall asleep. Just, it's it opens the road to just using my phone at night. So I have it on my desk here, an old switch stand, put it on here and I go, I go, I go sleep. And yeah, it's annoying that I default to TV, especially when I genuinely want to read more. And so instead of trying to find a reason of why I want to read more, I think I'm going to find a reason of why I want to read every single book. What will, what value will this book give me, right? Speaking of what books I want to be reading, what books I think will give me something, let's jump into my goals. Ah! <laughs> This section might get a little tedious. But I'm gonna do my best to make it quick. Recently, I was viewing goals in terms of months. Read four books a month, one book a week, right? Pretty easy. That didn't work for the last 10 months of 2021. I want to label a specific intention for every single book that I have on my bookshelf. Right next to my laptop, I have my Japanese notes, I guess, my sketchbook, and these books. Each of them have a reason to be in sight at all times. Le sorceleur. It's in French. I got this in Paris in 2020, March, February-ish. It's something to keep me producing French. French. You can't, can't just, you don't just learn a language. It doesn't become a thing one day or you just know forever. And if I don't have at least one thing to practice French, it's going to disappear. It's good practice because when I feel proficient in Japanese, hopefully N3, maybe N2, I'll move on to something, another language, but I'll keep doing Japanese by reading things and whatever. So as my reading habit has a strong foundation, I can slide in other things to it. Letters to Milena. Yes, I am still reading this book. Good God. This one has the specific intention of wanting to become attached to emotion again. I think somewhere along the line, I detached myself. In, in, in some ways, feeling, emotion, in, in ways. Reading Kafka as someone who's so verbose in terms of how he feels and stuff is pretty, is, is very nice. And uh, that's definitely a good intention for that book. This is the first light novel of Sword Art Online. It looks like this. Makes sense, you read top down Japanese. What's great is that uh, I recognize some kanji here and there. Hold, five, beauty say, love it, Wani Kani's doing its job. I'm not at middle school level yet. So I'm gonna keep this here as inspiration. And this is another one of the books I wanna be reading is My Hero Academia Manga. This is something to fit into my reading habit that helps me practice Japanese. Seneca's Letters from a Stoic. I don't think I have been thinking enough recently. I have been detached from reading philosophy. Reading Epictetus and Aurelius, super helpful. But I got it a while ago and being connected with some philosophy I think will be good for me. I haven't finished Will to Power. That one, that's a different story. <laughs> Nietzsche is, oh man. And lastly, but not least, least nerds per minute. My intention is to deliver on a promise that I made, get a video out that I think I can make a good video. I have so much stuff that I've learned lately, thumbnails, titles, editing tips and tricks. Maybe you've noticed some things in this video compared to last reading ramble. If you have, let me know what you liked about this video, what you didn't, I'd love to hear feedback. But I think I have a much broader awareness of what would make a good video for this book. For that reason, I would love to finish it. Maybe I get halfway through and make a video in the first half, that's okay. But halfway through is more than the one chapter through right now. So I'm gonna finish Dakota in the next two days, but I'm not gonna stress too much about it. <sighs> so those have been my thoughts on my reading habit that has been falling not so gracefully. Yeah, the last thing I want to mention, with those books, those those are the ones I wanna read and why I wanna read them. Now, if we pan over here, we have a whole bunch of books over here. Those are all books I wanna finish by June. I brought a bunch of books with me to New York and I thought I'm gonna finish these and give them away, 
bring them to a book drive or something. And that way, I don't have to move them with me. And then what happened? I had to move them all with me because I didn't read. Maybe I sound all upbeat and positive. I am genuinely a little bit upset with myself about all this because it does feel like I don't have time to read, but in reality, I'm waking up late. Uh, I'm watching show more TV than I should be. There are times when I'm in the train and I'm listening to music and the thinking is good half the time. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment what you're reading, anything that's resonated with you, I'd love to hear it. Hopefully reading rambles will be a little combination of what I got from books, but also this evolution of my reading habit because I think that's the value I can provide most right now. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you in a month.